So welcome to the second module in our mini course, Catching Market Tops and Bottoms Using Elliott Wave Theory. All right, this is module number two, and this module is called Identifying Counter Trend Moves Using Elliott Wave Theory. Counter Trend Moves are called corrections. So let's go through what exactly is a correction. So the basic definition of a correction in Elliott Wave terms is a three-wave movement against the direction of the dominant trend. In module number one, we figured out what the dominant trend is. Now, once you know that a, a dominant that a trend move in five waves have has completed, you know to expect a counter trend correction. So, in this video, we'll show you how to go through that and how to identify that. Corrections are always labeled in either ABC or WXY. And ABC is a simple correction. WXY labeling is a, is also a correction, but it's what we call a combination or a complex correction. And a complex correction would be where multiple simple corrections come together to form a larger corrective structure. So a correction is overlapping and undecided market moves. So you'll know by looking at it, there's, there's, there's no power basically in the moves. The price movement in a particular direction within that correction will be retraced usually to a large extent. And the this a, a correction will take what seems like an age in comparison to an impulse move uh, to make any kind of progress in any direction whatsoever. So the correction, it's almost like the market does not want to do it, but the wave structure calls for it to happen. So it's really, the, mar the price is moving against what it really wants to do. And that kind of bears witness in the price structure itself. So on average, you know, uh, corrections tend to retrace about 50% of the trend move. So even knowing that particular knowledge, it will give you uh, an idea of where to target for a correction, you know, where, what, where to expect this correction to finish, you know, wh whatever you're looking at in whatever market. To a large extent, support for corrective moves comes in at where the previous fourth wave low of one lesser degree. Now I'll go through this. This is a very powerful tool to kind of um, to forecast corrections and end, ending points for corrections, the previous fourth wave low. I'll go through that with you in detail on the charts. So how does that translate into charting and analysis and trading in general? Well, again, we'll use our dollar yen example. Um, I'll go through, in the first video, we went through the trend move. In this video, we'll go through the correction and how that has played out so far and how to label that and what's the best way, the best interpretation in terms of Elliott Wave for that correction. And then what that correction means for the market outlook. And again, you can apply this knowledge to to any uh, market that you're following. It doesn't have to be dollar yen. This is the example. Um, the, the basic tenants will stand across any market. So let's get on in there and I'll show you exactly how this plays out on a chart itself. So now that we have our wave A complete, our first leg of this new trend move to the upside is complete. Uh, we wanna look at where we could possibly see wave B. Um, there are two guidelines for corrections. Uh, one of them would be the, a correction would be attracted to the previous fourth wave low. So that would be around 96 there on this particular chart. Another one would be a Fibonacci retracement of about 50% on average. So we would put in a Fib ratio there and that would give us uh, 100. So we'll put in a target line there at 100. So now we have our two targets. We have between 100 and 96. So let's, uh, we. We, we think that this um, wave A is complete, so let's move on and see how wave B has, has performed so far. So you can see since then, since the wave A high, we've had this overlapping, very undecided move in the market. So, and we reached a low right in the middle of that range there of uh, 98. So we had uh, 98, 80, I think which was right in the center of the range here. Now, why do I think, or why do I believe that this is a corrective move rather than a new um, impulse move to the downside? Well, I'm gonna look at the three areas. The form, first of all, is like I said, overlapping and undecided. It took a long time for this market to cover no ground really whatsoever in comparison to the impulse move to the upside off the 75 low, uh, the, the market just seemed to, to, like a steam train, just travel on up without anything getting in its way. 
um, even these uh, corrective moves were um, the, the corrective moves didn't retrace you know a whole lot in terms of the uh, the, the points traveled whereas in since the high you know any decline to the downside has been has been met with a, a retracement a very deep re retracement back to the upside again so what I can say is by just looking at this form here that um, it looks definitely corrective to me there's no way that you can really label this with any uh, certainty as an impulse move to the downside so we'll work on a correction and we'll label it in that in that sense so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a possible form for this uh, correction to the downside now it doesn't look like a simple zigzag to me so a simple zig zigzag would, would look something like this um, we would have five waves down in a uh, three waves up in b and another five waves down to the downsides giving us a, a simple form and three moves to the downside what we have here in this case is, is something completely different it i believe it's a combination so it's it's an additive form it takes multiple different types of corrections adds them together to make one larger structure the first thing that attracts me again in this whole move here is this central kind of contraction of prices in what i think is a, a contracting triangle so i'm going to get a couple of uh, trend lines there now what were you saying about contracting triangles we said that they either happen in a b wave or a fourth wave so you can be pretty sure that this central um, contracting triangle here is either a B wave or a fourth wave. So we'll just zoom in to see that a bit better. Now a combination correction is labeled as a WXY rather than an ABC, uh, just to differentiate it from the simple uh, corrective form in ABC. So in this case, the X wave would take the place of a B wave. Now, like I said, triangles or contracting triangles tend to happen in either fourth waves or B waves. So this being the version of a B wave, we're going to label that as X. And if that is the end of the X wave, well then the start of this triangle would be the end of the first leg down in wave W. There's an argument that this low here in June is the completion of that whole B wave. So I think that we had an initial move down in a, in a wave W. We had a contracting triangle in a wave X and we're either finished wave Y or we will get one more leg down in wave Y to complete. Um, immediately what you'll see is the wave, the final wave of uh, this correction reached our initial target zone of between 100 and 96. So that would be the 50% retracement and the previous fourth wave low. So let's get on in there and label the internal waves here uh, as best we can to see how far we are along this uh, con this this correction and um, where we're likely to go from here so first of all i'm going to take uh, this first initial move here and we can see that we had three moves off the high three separate waves off the high and then the market re reacted to that so this first initial three wave move off the high i'm going to label wave a down and three three waves in a and how did the market react to that well we got three waves up and i think that completed wave b and since that b wave high we had an impulsive form to the downside into this w label here and i think you can label that in five waves as a one two three four and five down and that would complete wave c of w and the form that that first w wave took would be a three three five so it's a, what's known as a flat correction to the downside three waves in a three waves in b and five waves in c to the downside so now let's move our attention to the internal uh, central wave x in this whole correction so this wave has got a kind of a contracting price range typical for a triangle it's got it's split into five waves. If we can get in here a little bit closer, you'll be able to see it better. It's split into, it's split into five waves. So let's label that and uh, see how that um, would label in the real in real time. So first we had an initial move off the wave W low in wave A. 
and then we had to decline to a higher low in wave B. Wave C was a lower high. Wave D, again, another higher low. And wave E completed at another lower high. So we had five waves contracting range and in an expected kind of B wave position, a central move position. And that would have completed your wave X. And this central wave here, contracting triangle, defines the whole um, form as a corrective form, I think. As off that wave X high, you would expect another overlapping and you know schizophrenic move to the downside. And that's exactly what we got so far anyway. So let's move on to that third wave and we'll see how that has uh, that third move down. We'll see how that's played out so far. Let's look at this stru structure here first and we'll break it down out of the, the exit from the end of the triangle. After a, a long time studying this, I think the best way to label this was is in three separate moves again in a possible flat correction. You call it a flat correction because of the internal wave structure rather than it being flat in form. So first we had three waves to a low here and I'm going to label that wave A. Simp just like in the first off the off the extreme high there we had three waves into the first A and then we've had three waves here into this this A wave. And then off that A wave low we had this strange structure and I think the best way to label this is as a running flat. So this is where um, the first leg takes the market up the second leg takes the market down past the, the beginning of the first leg, and the third leg takes the market to close to, but not past the, the initial move of that wave. So a flat correction, a running flat correction, and a possible three wave move down to complete. And we'll leave, label that C. Now, as we said, this could be this whole structure complete. This could be ABCs down in W, could be a five wave contraction contracting triangle in wave X and we could have an ABC down in Y so that would mean as right in the middle of this um, this initial zone target zone that we had for for our correction to complete um, it's got three overall waves it's got a central contracting triangle and you know it fits the bill so let's run over this again in terms of defining a counter trend move you're going to look at a few different things. You're going to look at the actual structural form. Is it an overlapping form? I think you can say yes in this in this case. Uh, any initial move is retraced to a large extent by the next move in the market. Um, does the market does the price find it hard to make any or negative or positive gains? And in this case, you can say yes. I, I mean, it went absolutely nowhere, flatlined for almost you know eight months here. Um, quintessential corrective type of move a lot of internal moves but no actual net gain or loss in the price and then thirdly what is the best most likely labeling for it can you can you point out impulsive moves you know uh, it, does it fit a five wave form as we can see that the previous um, first leg up did it fit a, it fit the five wave form far better than it fit a three wave form and I think in this case, you can see that the, the waves, the internal waves, fit a three wave form far better than they fit a five wave, five wave form. Another question to ask yourself is, can you see triangles? And if you can see triangles, contracting triangles, where do they most likely fit in a wave structure? And like I said, they're either in a B wave or X wave position or a fourth wave position. In this case, it's in a central part of the move. It's got overlapping moves on both sides of it, and you can pretty much say that that's an X or a B wave right there. So you can see that the overall form fits the kind of characteristics of um, a correction rather than a new impulse move to the downside. So a three wave form rather than a five wave form. So that's identifying um, corrective waves. We've labeled it and uh, We've deconstructed the form and we have and we have identified it as a corrective wave.
So in the next video, we're going to go into identifying the maturity of any trend. So get on in there and um, hope you enjoy it.